Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today is actually going to be a first impressions video. Um, I did a poll on the Mad About Skin Facebook group asking what essence I should uh, try to work into my routine next or do a first impressions of because I am in need of a new essence. So we're going to talk about that product and do some first impressions, but I did want to call out some of the products that I used leading up to starting this video. Um, I We had like a kind of a snow day here in Colorado and I got to work from home. So rather than having to commute home and do all that stuff, I was able to just kind of log off and go right into recording, which is awesome because with the commute and being tired from um, starting this new job and just being ready to relax. I haven't had a ton of time to record videos and then my weekends are usually spent doing um, activities and stuff and I just haven't been filming as much as I'd like to. So happy to be back at it and have some time to do this first impressions. So I went ahead and started my PM routine. So I've done my double cleanse and then we're gonna talk about the toner that I'm currently using, um, which we've already mentioned in a previous first impressions video. And then we'll talk all about that essence. So right now my first step cleanser is the Paula's Choice Omega Plus Complex Cleansing Balm. Just started using this a couple of days ago after finishing up the Beauty of Josen uh, Radiance Cleansing Balm, which I loved. So this one is um, similar in the sense that it's a pretty stripped down ingredients list. It doesn't include any of those brightening ingredients that were in the Beauty of Josen, but you do have um, some olive oil esters in here, metafoam seed oil, jojoba seed oil, rapeseed oil as well, and then some PEGs for that emulsification. I found that this one is really nicely creamy and a little bit more oily feeling as compared to that Beauty of Josen, which was kind of more synthetic feeling, but this still emulsifies and rinses really nicely. Zero fragrance and a decent size at 103 milliliters. I'm also torn on if I like the tube style or not. I remember with the uh, Inky List Oat, I think it's Oat Cleansing Balm, I really had to squeeze to get that last little bit out. But this seems a little bit more creamy and a little bit more easily spreadable. So I'm thinking I'll be able to get it out of the tube a little bit faster. So, um, or a little bit more easily. So there's that. That's what I've been using as my first step cleanser for the past couple of days. And then as my second step cleanser, I just started using this fairly recently as well. It's the Holy Frog uh, Superior Omega Nutritive Gel Wash. Doo -doo -doo. Um, so this has been sitting in my routine for quite some time. Uh, this brand was super, super popular in like 2019, 2020, or maybe 2020 to 2021. Got a lot of hype from a lot of different um, influencers and YouTubers and all that stuff. But it's kind of fallen off the radar a little bit. I don't see it as frequently, especially I think Jam James Welsh mentioned them quite often, but I don't really see it mentioned that much anymore. Um, I haven't had the best of luck with their products. Their scrubby wash was way too intense for me. Their cleansing balm really didn't have any emulsifying or um, yeah, emulsifying ingredients, so it didn't really rinse that well and left kind of a oily, waxy residue on my skin. So I bailed on both of those. I believe even before putting together a full review, I, I might have done a full review of that scrubby wash, but they didn't last very long in my routine, so I have been looking forward to getting to some of their gel cleansers or their washes because they seem to be the core of what the brand was focusing on when they originally launched. And um, so far, it's good. You know, I've only been using it for a few days now. Um, it's fine. It's got a pretty interesting scent. There's no added fragrance here, but it has that kind of like soapy scent, but it's also a little bit sour and a little bit kind of like clay or Play-Doh-y. And it's not the best sensorial experience in the, sh in the shower or at the sink. Um, the times I have been using it, it ju I'm just kind of like, oh, like this doesn't smell that great but it does offer a really nice gentle wash with a little bit of lather which is a plus it has some other um nutritive or like active or beneficial ingredients in it um, but i don't have the box with me so i'll have to call those out when i do the full review it's fine i think it'd be great for a gentle skin it doesn't leave the skin dry it leaves it a little bit um, hydrated so i don't feel as obligated to like rush over and grab my toner and start slapping that on um, so i do like that and i like that mild foam so it's kind of a nice balance between those jelly cleansers that don't really foam at all and something that's really highly lathering and potentially drying so very 
very happy with it in the few times I've used it aside from the scent. So that is that for the Holy Frog. And this looks like a fairly small bottle compared to like a larger tube. It's just kind of wide, a little bit squat. So it's still 150 milliliters, which is a pretty decent size for a cleanser. So I'll update as I hit or get closer to my one month mark and do a full review of that. Um, and then the toner, we're actually going to use this right now. I uh, called this out or went over it during the first impressions video I did last time, and this is the Make Prem Save Me Relief Essence Toner. I have been loving this toner, super layerable, super hydrating, a little bit soothing, and a little bit kind of nourishing as well, and it is a massive size at 400 milliliters, so I have been using this for uh, almost a month now, maybe like three weeks, and I'm only to like down here because I really just need like one or two splashes, just a couple layers, and it just delivers a lot of watery hydration. So let's go ahead and slap on another layer. I'm so looking forward to putting together this full review. So just a splash in the hands, in the palms, and pat in. No scent here, it just has kind of like a watery nothing scent, which I like. It's I, I would believe this would be super approachable for your um, sensitive skin types. And I really think this would be great for pretty much any um, skin type as far as like oily or dry or combination, because you can kind of layer it and customize it to your needs. Those with drier skin can go in with several layers. Those with more oily skin might just need one, maybe two layers. I typically do two, sometimes three, depending on the day. But this has been great in the dry Colorado winters where it's just cold and windy and dry and it just provides so much hydration. It sinks right in. It doesn't leave any sort of tackiness or residue. It doesn't prevent my other skincare steps from layering on top or absorbing. It just kind of melds right into my routine so wonderfully. So very happy with that and such a good value at that size. Um, my heart wants me to keep using it even after the month review, but I feel like I wouldn't be able to touch any other toners for like six or seven months because I'll, I'll still be cranking through that. So we'll see how long it, um, uh, stays in my routine after I do that full review, I may have to give it away or decant it into smaller bottles to share with friends or family because it's just big. It's I have way too many toners to um, to pause for the majority of the year to get through this, but I'm very happy with it. I think I need to dive into Make Prem a little bit more. They were one of the very first K-Beauty brands that I tried in 2018. They had a capsule sun gel essence sunscreen that was almost like a clear fluid with these little balls of like the... that. Um, SPF ingredients so you'd kind of have to like massage it to break all of that up and then and then work it into skin and it was like the very first sunscreen that I used that absorbed wonderfully zero white cast because it was a chemical filter based sunscreen and just offered a lot of protection and then they discontinued it and started it working in a lot more mineral or hybrid sunscreens and those just don't work for my skin tone I get a white cast from Pretty much anything with zinc or titanium dioxide will leave a white cast or it'll gather on my the creases of my eyelids. So when I close my eyes, I've got like two little white lines there or on the creases on my neck. So I haven't tried a single mineral sunscreen that is 100% transparent, which is just the nature of zinc and titanium dioxide. So, um, or zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. So I am a chemical sunscreen only person just because of the the cosmetic look of it once it's applied. So I think they still have a couple uh, chemical sunscreens. Um, a, a, a podcaster slash skincare influencer, uh, Sugar Peaches Loves, called out one Make Prem chemical sunscreen on her favorites of 2021 podcast. And so I'm going to give that a shot. I forget the exact name, but she said it's kind of under the radar and not a lot of people talk about it, but it is one of their fully chemical sunscreen products and she loves it. So I'm going to hunt that down and maybe order it today. Um, but now we're kind of coming on to the main event. So the essence that was picked from the Mad About Skin Facebook group for me to do a first impressions of is the Dr. Suracle Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. I know this is like one of the most hyped in, uh, products of last year and everyone was loving it. I usually am a little bit late to the party when it comes to doing my reviews for like, um, you know, products that are like at the top of mind for a lot of people and getting called out because I'll usually see that uh, or see it a little bit ahead of time and order it, but I have a lot of products to get through and I go off of using products mainly from expiration dates. So I might buy a brand new product that was just launched or get sent a product that is uh, launching soon. 
And it might not make it into a video or a view or any sort of my uh, any sort of content that I create because there's a long waiting list before I get to that thing that I just got. So sometimes I'll do an unboxing and I'm like, I'm so excited to try all this stuff that just came in the mail. And then it doesn't show up for like a year because there's so many other things to get to. So I'll try to be a little bit better about that and be kind of on the pulse of like new releases and sharing my thoughts as they launch because I know that's really beneficial for people that are doing their making their purchasing decisions. But I also think that a, a lot of folks that read my reviews appreciate the fact that usually my review comes like months, if not even a full year after the product was launched because it really does give me a little bit of time to kind of see how that hype fizzles out and if it really is a standout product or it was just kind of big in the moment because it was new and exciting, but there wasn't a lot of substance there. So it gives me some time to kind of watch how the product trends, how sales go with, with that particular product, and then really take my time and not feel obligated to like rush a review into place. So that being said, here it is. I gently took it out of the bottle because I wanted, or out of the package, because I wanted to show that variation in consistency. So this has like a dual phase to it. It's got that watery, hydrating uh, fluid here, and then more of a creamy, kind of nourishy um, looking, it's almost like a foamy kind of cream on the top. So you're meant to shake this up, use it together, and it's supposed to almost act like um, some of the other dual phase toners and essences like the... I think that I'm from, was the, I forget if their rice toner was a dual phase or it was just always looked kind of cloudy, but especially the Laneige cream skin was kind of that dual phase. I've used a couple of these before. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I have combination oily skin that is prone to congestion. So anytime I put something on that has that kind of oiliness, especially when there's a lot of meadow foam seed oil, it can feel a little bit greasy on my skin and leave a little bit of a layer and sometimes cause some congestion, clogged pores, um, more noticeable texture to my skin, so I'm always wary. But this one, from what I was reading, a lot of people said it doesn't do that. It's kind of the one that bucks the trend. But I love this glass bottle. It has fermented green tea extract, which gives it that kombucha name. You also have, um, I believe there's Centella Asiatica in here, and then the oil that they do use is sunflower seed oil, and that comes pretty later on in the ingredients list. It's not quite as high up as some of those other dual phase products. So let's give it a shot. We're gonna go ahead and uh, shake this up. So, oh, it's so cool. It looks like boba tea. Oh, it's so like a black boba milk tea. This is great. Um, as far as a look, I can see why there is so much hype around this just from the packaging and what it looks like because it's just a very elegant and like kind of luxurious and fun product to use. So in that glass, this glass bottle just feels so hefty. Um, it's got a little stopper in here. Ugh, there we go. That's like, um, I, I watch a lot of electronics uh, like reviews or like, new cell phone, new iPad, new whatever. And like one of the things that they do for like ASMR is they'll peel that like um, protective film when you take it out of the box off and it makes that kind of like like sound when you peel off that plastic and a lot of people love that sound. Mine personally is when I open up a new skincare product or a toner and it's got that stopper and it makes that little like, like that little pop sound. It's like, welcome to your new routine. So um, once again, I love this glass packaging. So I'm just gonna do a little splash in the hands like that, similar to what I did with the toner. No real scent. Okay. Wow, that applies really nicely. Feels hydrating, um, immediately kind of creates a softening effect to the skin, which is really nice. Those green tea benefits are gonna come through in some brightening and antioxidant power over time. And then you should see some immediate hydration kind of dewiness just from having a layerable fluid. So second um, splash and application. That feels really nice. I'm not feeling that immediate kind of greasiness or um, residue on the surface of the skin like I did with the Laneige Cream Skin. Um, I forget, there were some other ones that I used that was just, that weren't, I wasn't a big fan of. So I kind of steered away from these dual phase products until this one came out and I, I just couldn't, everywhere I turned, it was being <laughs> um, praised and loved. And so I was just thinking, you know what? I want to I want to put my own two cents in on this product. So, there we go. Awesome. So that feels really nice. Um 
nicely hydrating. It is a little bit more nourishing feeling in the sense that it's not just soaking right in. There is a little bit of something there, but it doesn't feel greasy. It feels like a light lotion, um, which the Laneige Cream Skin did kind of feel like a light lotion at first, but then after like layer two, it would just be too much. And even just a single layer, there was just a little bit of um, sheen or greasiness or residue on the surface of my skin. And it kind of kept my other serums and moisturizers from penetrating as deeply as they normally do. So I like it. It seems fine out of the gate. This might be something that I really like during the, the cooler winter months and where it's especially dry and windy, um, but I don't know how I'd feel about this during the summer. There is a little bit of that nourishing feel left behind. I typically like something that's really light and refreshing during the summer and kind of cooling. This is more on the warm blanket side than the, um, you know, blast of like cooling refreshment, but it is nice. I think this might be a nice compromise for um, us with combination oily skin that still want a little bit extra out of um, their layerable fluids during those drier, cooler times of the year. So I'm happy with it. It's immediately going into um, my regular routine. So I'm going to be using this daily, um, twice a day, morning and evening for the next month. And then we'll do a review. Um, barring any sort of reaction. If I have any sort of reaction to the ingredients or I'm starting to notice breakouts or if it does end up feeling oily over time, I'll make sure to include that in the review and update everyone. So that's that for the Dr. Surical Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. I've been really looking forward to pulling this down from my stash and giving it a shot. So thank you so much to the Mad About Skin Facebook group folks for participating in those polls. I may have another one out soon. So if you are a member of that group, Group, which if you're not, I highly suggest you head on over to Facebook and look that up. Um, I'll probably be doing one for, uh, I'm not sure, I might have a serum or a moisturizer uh, poll coming up soon um, because I'm just about finished with some reviews. So thank you so much for watching and as always, stay glowing. Bye!